In this video, I will demonstrate how to add raster maps to the Android version of the Osmond Maps and Navigation app. These include almost any map you can find online. Visitor maps, vegetation maps, old maps. You might want to do this to augment Osmond's default maps, which are based on data from the OpenStreetMap project. As we'll see, Osmond makes it easy to switch back and forth between them. To make this happen, I'll be using a Windows program called MapC to MapC, which is written and sold by John Thorne, who first developed the program for his travels in Spain. It has since become a kind of Swiss army knife for dealing with the many formats used by maps, GPSs, and GPS apps, including Osmond. As I record this, the program sells for £15, or a little less than $19. You can try it for free. Osmond's library of OpenStreetMap data can be surprisingly detailed. But there are times when a supplemental map can be useful. For example, here's Osmond's default map of Joshua Tree National Park in Southern California at zoom level 11. And here's the raster park map of the same area, which gives a much better overview. But if we zoom closer, the Osmond map shows features that the park map omits. In fact, both maps have their strengths, one for finding trailheads and features, the other for exploring them. And you can switch between them using what Osmond calls a transparency seek bar, basically an on-screen slider that lets you move between the two maps. You can see one, the other, or both. Here's another example, part of the Point Reyes National Seashore in Northern California. Here's the Osmond OpenStreetMap rendering, Here's the National Park Service map. Surprisingly, I can also navigate using the raster map. From my position here near the edge of the map, I'm marking the Point Reyes Lighthouse as my destination. I push the direction button to see the route, and the go button to start navigation. This works even though this is essentially a paper map. That's because the vector data from the default map is still present. Raster maps can also act as a time machine, as demonstrated by this 1869 map of San Francisco. Those cemeteries are now long gone. Depending on the format of your map, there are usually four or five steps involved in putting a raster map on Osmond. If the original map is a PDF, you first convert it to a JPEG or other format that can be read by MapC to MapC. You then geo-reference the image, meaning you associate the pixels of the image with geographical coordinates. Some online maps are already geo-referenced. If that's the case, you may be able to skip the first two steps. You then convert the calibrated image into a format that can be read by Osmond. You put the map on your device, and finally, you specify the map in Osmond as an additional layer. There are several freeware options for doing step one. I'll be using MapC to MapC for steps two and three. We do need one other piece of software, the Geospatial Data Abstraction Library, or GDAL. This is an open source translator library for raster and vector mapping data. MapC to MapC uses it. You link it here. Also, the first time out, we need an Osmond plugin called Online Maps. We get it from the Plugins menu via the Menu button. Okay, we're set to begin. I start by downloading a map from the internet, in this case, a PDF file. MapC to MapC can handle several image formats, but PDFs are not one of them. There are, though, several ways to convert them. Here I'm using the open source GNU image manipulation program to create a JPEG of 600 pixels per inch. The next step is to geo-reference this image using MapC to MapC. This is the most involved of the steps, 
and I'll demonstrate a few ways to do it. I first load the image for calibration. I then select from map coordinates, meaning I'm going to specify the coordinates for a few areas of the map. I select the map image. I then specify the map grid and the datum. For many maps, the datum is WGS84 as shown here, but some older maps may use NAD27 instead, and there are other datums as well. I then import the image. Notice at this stage, this image is just a matrix of pixels. There's nothing geographic about it. I'm now going to pick out three points where I can identify the geographic coordinates. Each of these is the intersection of two roads or two trails. Here are the coordinates for the first point, as shown on Microsoft Bing Maps, which has a nice built-in copy function. I paste them in. And here's my point. The other two points are done similarly. We wind up identifying three points, along with their associated coordinates. If I right-click on one of the points, I get a fine-tuning screen that gives me two ways to further adjust the data. The image is now geo-referenced. The calibration data for the map is contained here. Some map images make this process easier by including coordinates on the map. That's the case with this 1918 map of the area. I just click on a numbered coordinate and enter what I see. Some online maps are already geo-referenced using formats like GeoPDF, GeoTIFF, and CAP, the format used for NOAA marine charts. MapC to MapC can open these directly, sometimes with the help of GDAL. That's the case here on Top of View, a service of the U.S. Geological Survey. Here I download a KMZ file, which I can then view as a calibrated map in MapC to C. There's one other geo-referencing technique I want to demonstrate, which uses a GPX or KML file. I'll use it to calibrate this 1869 map of San Francisco. I start with Google's My Maps, which can generate KML files. I'll mark out three points common to both. The foot of Market Street, Fort Point, and a corner of Golden Gate Park. I then create a KML file that includes these three points. Now, using map C to map C, I open the uncalibrated image, specifying that I'm using a file of points. I select the JPEG, and then I'm prompted for the associated KML file. Each of my three points is shown on Google Maps. I select the corresponding points on the map image.
The image is now geo-referenced. We now have four geo-referenced maps. The next step is to convert them into a format compatible with Osmond. But it's worth noting that at this stage, Map C to Map C can make these maps compatible with a wide variety of GPS apps and GPS devices. Osmond is one of them. Its preferred raster map file format is the flavor of SQLite, and this format is also used by a few other Android GPS apps. So continue with our most recently calibrated map. I select from the Files menu, Write Map for Mobile Device. And from there I select, and this is not obvious, the SQLite format for Locus, RMaps, and Galileo. I make sure the SQLite file name is meaningful. This is the map name you'll see on the device. The software then goes to work, generating a set of tiles for each zoom level. To convert a second calibrated map, I load it. The rest of the steps are the same. Here are our four maps ready to be transferred to a device. You can view any of them with a the utility found here. This, for example, is the 1918 point raise map positioned within a larger contemporary map. I now transfer the four SQLite files to the device. They go in Osmond's Tiles folder. The last step is to select a map as an additional layer. I do this by pushing the Configure Map button and then enabling Overlay Map or Underlay Map. The underlay map layer has an option called Show Polygons. When enabled, the default vector layer becomes opaque. When disabled, it becomes transparent. And in that transparent state, you can get a combination of the two maps that's almost seamless. And with polygons off, you can also shift between two raster maps by designating one of them as an overlay. Finally, I'd like to put in a word for a website, Old Maps Online which is a project maintained by volunteers and the Swiss company, Cloakin Technologies. This is a search engine for historical maps. You can put in a place and narrow the time frame. Affiliates include a who's who of institutions that have archived maps online. The website is oldmapsonline.org.